What up everybody? About a month ago here on the channel, I did a video about the video doorbell we were using here at Silverhammer Tower and how it integrated it into the brilliant smart control. Now at that time it was the Google Nest video doorbell and I was using the Starling Home Hub to get it into Apple Home or Apple Home Kit. Now that video had come out just around the same time that Acara released the G4 video doorbell. And I was talking about how I wasn't gonna unbox it and review it like everybody else because I had two concerns with it as a guy that installs video doorbells for people every day. Number one, the size of it, and number two, the horizontal orientation of the lens. Those were concerns because like I said, we've installed video doorbells every day since video doorbells started to exist and I knew it was gonna be a problem. Well, guess what? In true George fashion, I've changed my mind. I had to try it and that's what we're talking about today. The Acara G4 video doorbell and not only did I decide to try it, but I decided to go all in and I've got three of them going here. So we're going to unbox it, give you my thoughts, talk about the specs and all that good stuff. Let's get started. Yo, how's everybody doing? It's George Langevier with Silver Hammer Surveillance. Here on the channel, we talk smart home tech, home security. Since October 2022, we've been talking colon cancer as I was diagnosed at that time. I think it's important for me to share my journey and spread awareness. So the way we're doing things nowadays is we're talking smart home tech, home security, colon cancer. We're doing it with chapters. We're going to try to get back to our old smart home tech and home security and do health updates at the end. And again, with chapters, skip around, watch whatever you want, because I thank you so much for your concern about my health. And obviously it's a fight and I'm still fighting and I'm gonna fight for a long time. I'm gonna be around for a long time. But man, I wanna get back to some smart home tech and home security and that's what we're talking about today. Video doorbell specifically, the Acara G4 video doorbell. Now, like I said in the intro, about a month ago I did a video, I was using Google Nest here, using the Starling Home Hub to get it in a home kit. And I talked about the reasons I didn't think I would unbox and review the G4 like everybody else. And it's because, at Silver Hammer Surveillance, we install smart home equipment and security equipment for people every day. We have for a long time. And I've done video doorbells since video doorbells were a thing. And I was worried about the size of the G4 and I was worried about the horizontal orientation and I didn't think I'd like it and that's why I thought I was gonna skip it. But in true George fashion, who's an absolute tech freak and wants to be a responsible YouTuber and review things that you wanna want me to review, I decided to switch to the G4 and do a review, we're gonna unbox it, we're gonna talk about all my thoughts and all that good stuff. And in addition to that, I had already used Acara sensors here as my security system. Acara has great sensors, every type you could wanna do for a do-it-yourself security system. I've been using that pretty much since we moved in. And then here recently, I switched to the Acara G2H Pros for my indoor cameras, and I thought, I want everything Acara, so in comes the G4. All right, so again, we're gonna start by unboxing it. Then we're gonna talk about the specs, then I'm going to talk about the app, and then I'm going to give you my thoughts, pros and cons, because there are both. So let's get started with the unboxing. All right, here we go. The Acara G4 video doorbell, compatible with HomeKit Secure Video. Awesome that it's a battery-powered option for HomeKit Secure Video. Haven't had that before in the United States. Fantastic. All right, there's the doorbell itself. Let's get it out of the plastic sleeve. Got the HomeKit code on the bottom. You can see the size of it. Now that is going to be a concern for some people. It's a big doorbell. HomeKit code on the bottom. You got the adhesive on the back. It's great to give you the adhesive option so you don't have to put screws in your wall or your brick. And I find that that adhesive worked pretty good. You got documentation there. And then in that box, you've got the AA batteries. It comes with six. I would recommend getting some rechargeable ones if you're going to do the battery powered. There's your chime. Now again, you don't have to mess with the chime on your wall on this one, which is great. Home kit code on the bottom of the chime, adhesive on the back to put it on the wall. You got USB-C for power, and you've got your SD card slot on that chime. There's the cord that comes with it for the USB-C for power for the chime. You do have to find your own charging brick for that, just so you know. All right, and again, you've got your six AA batteries, and there you've got the wedge and the mounting plate. Now the wedge just gives it a little angle. And again, you've got the adhesive option, which is cool that Acara gives you that option. No holes. Those are the two little screws that will mount the mounting plate to the wedge. Again, you got your batteries. Now, I'll show you later in the video, I got some rechargeable ones. What else we got here? We got uh, the screw. 
or the uh, screwdriver, excuse me, for the security screw, some wall anchors, and then two longer screws. That's for the actual wall plate. And that's it. That's what we got in the box. Let's move on. All right, so that was the unboxing. Let's talk about some specs. First of all, I just want to mention that I bought these on my own. These were not sent to me. I bought three of them, one for my front door, one for my patio, and one for my garage door. They are $119 on Amazon currently. You can use it with Apple Home, Google Home, and Alexa. You use it with your 2.4 gigahertz band on your Wi-Fi router. Weather resistant from zero to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. That's what Acara recommends as far as climate to put these things in. Zero to 95% humidity. You can battery power this or hardwire it, which is cool. You got both options. So that's fantastic. This is compatible with HomeKit Secure Video. This is our first battery powered HomeKit Secure Video doorbell, which is awesome. We've been waiting for this for a long time. So it's great to have both options. And in fact, if you hardwire it, you can still put the batteries in there as a battery backup, which is cool. Okay, 162 field of view wide angle lens. Now again, this was my hang up at the beginning because I like the vertical orientation normal on a doorbell, especially for packages. This one's horizontal, 162 degree view. And we're gonna talk about whether or not I ended up liking that or not. And we've got 1080p resolution, again, in HomeKit Secure Video, that's as high as we can go. So Cara put this as 1080p. The doorbell is 5.5 inches by 2.5 by 1.2 inches. Now that's important as far as the size of the sucker. It is a little bit big. Now for me personally, it ended up working here, and I'm gonna talk about that more but I do have concerns as far as general installations. Again, we install video doorbells for a lot of people, not just for myself. So I gotta think about a lot of people when I think about the size of this thing. But anyway, that's the size. You got a 95 decibel chime repeater that comes with it. You can put an SD card in this up to 512 gigs, which is awesome because if you do that and you constantly power the doorbell, you can also get 24 seven recording, which is a big deal when it comes to video doorbells. Seven days of free cloud storage from a car, which is awesome. And again, this is compatible with HomeKit Secure Video. So with the right iCloud storage plan, you can put it with all your other HomeKit Secure Video cameras, like I'm currently doing all a car right now. Now again, just to cover some of the benefits of HomeKit Secure Video, you've got end-to-end -end encryption. It's very secure. Apple's all about your privacy. You've got event recording for 10 days, and events can be people, vehicles, animals, or packages. And you've got HomePod announcements, so it'll announce who's at the door over your HomePod. And in fact, if you go in and name everybody in your Apple Photos, it'll announce that by name. You've also got Apple Watch notifications, and you've also got your cameras on your Apple TV, which is cool. So you can switch between each camera. You can also get those events to pop up when you're watching TV. And I love that feature, both as a security guy and a smart home guy. So HomeKit Secure Video is an awesome way to use security, and it's great that this video doorbell is compatible, and it's awesome that it's the first battery-powered compatible doorbell. All right, we talked specs, now let's talk about installation. Now you saw in the unboxing what comes with this bad boy. You got the wedge, which turns a little bit if you need a different angle. You got the mounting plate for the doorbell itself, and you can skip the wedge if you want. You got the doorbell and then you got the chime connector. Now the chime connector doesn't involve your actual chime on the wall like most doorbells do, which is great. It just needs to be within five meters of the doorbell. You use the USB-C to plug it into the wall. That's also where your SD card slot is. So keep that in mind, 512 gig SD card compatible for 24 seven recording if your video doorbell is powered, which is awesome. But again, easy installation. Now both the wedge and the mounting plate come with adhesive if you don't wanna put screws in the wall, which is awesome, or in the brick. I find that adhesive works pretty well even on brick, but it does come with two screws if you wanna screw either the wedge or the mounting plate in, and then obviously two screws to connect the plate and the wedge if you want to do that as well. Then you just slip the doorbell on, you put the batteries in first. It comes with six AA batteries out of the box. Now me personally, I got three of these and I bought some rechargeable batteries because I know I'm gonna cycle through them. Acara says you can get up to four months on the battery, but I can tell through testing it's not gonna last that long. So. Again, rechargeable batteries might be a good idea on this particular doorbell, but just awesome that the battery option exists. But if you can power it, power it, because not only would you have power, but you also have the batteries as a backup, which is very cool. But again, installation is very easy. All right, so now that we talked about installation, let's talk about the Acara app and the integration with Apple Home. So starting with the Acara app, so you can see here that I did have my security system already set up. I had the G2H Pro cameras already set up. And again, that's one of the reasons I chose to get the G4 going here. And let's just find the front doorbell. 
Now you can see you've got your video there, you've got your battery level, you've got your signal indicator at the top. You can take a still picture, you can start recording if you want. You can start a call, and if you start a call, this one of the cool features of this is you've got some disguised voices. You can do your original voice, you can do an uncle voice, a robot voice, and a clown voice. I'm not gonna demonstrate those, but it's kinda cool that they give you those options. And then you can pause the video, you can mute the audio, you can go back into your other view where you can see your other devices plus your camera. And then uh, let's go back to that. You can go full screen. And then down below, you've got your events. And then you can go into playback. You've got your, your scrub there for time. And then again, that's if you have an SD card in there and you're recording. Now, a car does give you that free cloud storage as well. So that's cool. But you got multiple options here. And then uh, some of the other options. There's just a ton of them. If you hit your three dots at the top. You've got the accessory name, so you can name it, the location where you put the doorbell, your device card. If you're familiar with Acara, that's just how it's gonna show up amongst all your devices. That's also an important name as far as how you put it in an Apple HomeKit. Um, so let's see here, you've got albums. So that's if you took any snapshots or you did any recorded video, that's where all that would be stored. And then more settings is your very general settings and it's pretty robust. Uh, so you can see your doorbell signal kind of gives you a diagram there of how far the chime should be from the doorbell. You go into your doorbell settings, you got working mode, you've got normal mode, power saving mode, and external power supply mode. Normal mode has all functions available, power saving mode will just be through the events, and then external power supply mode automatically switches to that if you have this on power. Uh, that way you can also do the 24 seven recording if you put an SD card in here. All right, then you got your language. You can turn the indicator light on and off. You got your device volume. I went up to 100%. Um, there's your SD card storage. You can go in there and get some information about your SD card. And then you've got your power frequency. If you get some glitches, you can switch that between 50 hertz and 60 hertz. High temperature alarm, low temperature alarm. And then if you go down to ringtone settings, there you can control the volume of the ringtone. You can do your customized ringtone and you can actually import some in here also. I didn't do that, I'm just not that kind of guy, but, but you could if you want. It's pretty cool that a car gives you that option. All right, then you go into the video settings. You can turn on the time watermark, do a lens correction. If there's any sort of distortion, infrared night vision, you can turn that to automatic or, or turn it off. Um, so that's cool that they give you that option. And then you've got a privacy occlusion area, which you can basically take whatever you want out of the image and do a privacy mask. Then you've got your alert settings. And let's see here, you've got facial recognition. You can turn that on. Again, you've got facial recognition through Apple HomeKit Secure Video. You've also got facial recognition through the Acara app. You can do a push notification here, um, recording. Uh, the doorbell will save a short clip in the cloud each time a facial is detected. And then you can go in there and set different options for the facial alert. You can also go in here and modify, you know, name people if it doesn't know their name already. Um, but you got a lot of control over the facial recognition, which is very cool. Let's see, link device control. So you can also do um, a car smart locks there to link it to your doorbell. And then you've got secure, uh, security settings, which is turn on the password and change the password, prevent accidental deletion, and device offline notification. Now also in the alert settings through an update, you can turn off the, dismant the forcible dismantle alarm. And you can see through the video that we shared here, it's pretty intense when that goes off. But as a security guy, I think it's very cool because it makes it very, you know, video doorbells are so easy to steal, but a car got hardcore because if you steal this thing, it's gonna be pretty worthless to you and it's gonna be pretty noisy. You wanna turn it off on your chime. But this still goes off. So good luck trying to steal this bad boy. Like I said, it's intense but you can turn that off if you want to in the app. And then you can turn on device on offline notification. You can toggle that on and off, which is cool. And then let's see, you've got uh, related automations. So as in Acara, you can do all sorts of automations actually in the Acara app, they would be listed here. So like for your security alarm, uh, whatever you've got in the Acara app, you can do all sorts of automations there and they would be, you could tie them in with the doorbell. 
And then you've got your logs, um, which will show you a list of, you know, all the different, it's capable of loitering alerts, um, somebody ringing the doorbell, uh, forcibly dismantled here. Um, you know, you've got all your log of everything that happened with the doorbell, which is cool. You got your network information, which shows your Wi-Fi strength, uh, the name of your network, some other things there, and then device privacy policy, your manufacturer, and so on and so forth. And then if you go into HomeKit Secure Video and you go up to your cameras, so that's pretty basic. If you're familiar with HomeKit Secure Video, it's pretty much the same. You can, um, you know, it shows your battery level there. You can see I'm already at 40%. I've been testing this about two weeks, um, so it's going quick. Uh, tells you if it's charging or not, which would tell you if it's on power. It tells you your room. Um, you can do your notifications. You can do activity notifications, which will alert you for people, animals, vehicles, and packages. Um, you can change your recording settings. And if you're familiar with the recording options in HomeKit Secure Video, you can do off, you can do it to where it just detects activity, you can do it where it just streams, and you can do it stream and allow recording, which does all the above. And then you can do people, animals, vehicles, or packages as far as what's recorded. And again, this is all end-to-end -end encryption and a very cool way to use cameras. And again, it's great that there's another compatible HomeKit Secure Video doorbell because here in the United States, we really only have three. You can turn on the chime for the doorbell as far as being alerted on your home pods. You can actually go into your home, your Apple uh, TV settings and determine if you want each doorbell to pop up on the screen with any alerts that you want. And you can do that for all your cameras on HomeKit Secure Video, which I love. You can go into facial recognition and you've got all your faces there that are known to your Apple photos. Um, you can do activity zones. Um, but pretty basic options in HomeKit Secure Video, which are pretty much the same for any HomeKit Secure Video camera. Uh, all available to you with this doorbell, which is great. And once again, it's awesome that this is the first battery powered um, offering in this HomeKit Secure Video world. So good job, Akara, keep them coming. Now you just need an outdoor camera. That's the one thing you're missing. Akara, please give us an outdoor camera that we can power, that's not just battery. Do what you did with the doorbell, that'd be Great, because then we can go all a car all the time for our cameras. Okay, so what do I actually think about this doorbell? What are my pros and cons? Let's start with the pros. Now, I don't know what it is. I've had three video doorbells here since September when we moved in. I had the Logitech Circle View, then I had the Google Nest wired using the Starling Home Hub to get in an Apple Home, and now the Acara G4. And even though all HomeKit secure video doorbells are 1080p, somehow, some way, I swear this Acara is crisper. And I don't know how that's possible, but it is. And I just, I don't know. I just think that's true. All right, also the orientation. You know, it's one of my big concerns as a Silver Hammer guy that's installed video doorbells for years. I was worried about that. Here at Silver Hammer Tower, I actually like it better. I get a wider angle. Now here on the side of our condo, we have an area where other people that live in this complex come and let their dogs do their business and they walk their dogs over there. And I like the wider angle because it shows people going to the side of our condo. I also have that camera in the back patio that shows that area too. And that wide angle gets our entire patio and the area where these dogs are. So I love that. And with the vertical angle, I didn't get that. So that's pretty cool. Now, I don't find myself missing any more packages as far as that orientation goes. And I don't, you know, when people get right up at my door, I was missing them anyway. So I like the horizontal orientation here. Now for our other customers, that's gonna vary house by house but me personally, I like it. Now the size, the size worked out here. That was not a con for me, but it could be a con for other people. So make sure you measure the space where your doorbell is gonna go because this sucker is very wide. But again, I like the look of it. I like the way it fit here. All is good on all three locations. My garage door area was a little thin, but I, I was able to make it work and it looks fine. So that didn't turn out to be a con for me like I thought. So all my, ma my major two concerns are kind of null and void, at least in my personal case. Now I do think for a lot of our customers, they will still be concerns and that'll be on a case by case basis. But for you out in YouTube land, I like it for myself. I love the features in the Acara app. Now I found the Acara app is more stable than HomeKit Secure Video. Now any HomeKit Secure Video doorbell that has their own app, I find that's the case. You can just get more robust with the actual uh, manufacturer's apps. It's just the way it is. 
but HomeKit Secure Video works the way you want it to here. Now I will tell you, I say it works the way you want it to here, but one of the cons is I have missed a couple clips, or at least the length of the clips compared to what I had on Nest and the Logitech. So with the Logitech and the Nest, I tended to have longer clips. Now Akara did try to fix that with a, a software update, a firmware update, and it did help a little bit. You get longer clips now, but I do find that I'm missing some of my uh, delivery drivers, whether when they're walking up or when they're walking away. Sometimes they're walking away before I see them. Now that can be a major con. Now it's only happening sometimes and it's got better since that firmware update, but I did have more event footage from the previous two video doorbells. And really, that's my only con. And now in Akara, with the 24 seven, that's not even a concern. So if you can power this and get an SD card in there and have that 24 seven video, you'll miss nothing, which is awesome. And uh, thanks to Akara, that's free. Whereas with Nest, you gotta do the Nest Aware and you gotta pay a fee for that. So I love that Akara does this for free with that Chime and the SD card slot. So then you don't miss anything. But HomeKit Secure Video, I am missing some events, but the Akara app makes up for it. So I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna live with it. I'm gonna keep this Akara G4 going. Um, but yeah, I, I love that it's $119. That's very affordable for a video doorbell. Uh, I'm gonna put the affiliate link in the description below if you're interested in buying it. it helps the channel, appreciate that very much. Overall, I think people were excited about this at the beginning when it was first released. Then some people started using it and they felt that it felt short in a couple different places, especially with those events. I think a car is listening and I think they're fixing it as they go. This is brand new. I got to hand it to them for being the first one with a battery powered doorbell. So I'm going to keep giving it a try. So I'm going to go back on what I said on that last video I did and I'm going to keep going with the car. I love their indoor cameras. And I said it before in this video, the only thing they're missing is outdoor video cameras. If they do that, if they give us some outdoor security cameras, Man, a car you can't go wrong. They're so affordable with their devices. They work with all your platforms. Great integration in Apple Home. They've always been so Apple Home friendly. I love Acara. Um, so I just think that if they work on this thing a little bit for the price, you can't go wrong here. And uh, again, with the Acara app making up for any HomeKit secure video shortcomings, you can't go wrong. So overall, I'm putting my stamp on this much more than I thought I would. Um, but again, for us here at Silver Hammer, it's going to be on a customer by customer basis because there are people that it's not going to work for because of the size. All right, so that's it. So that's the Acara G4 video doorbell. Overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Now, again, I know a lot of YouTubers started with it, did the review, and then they switched back to something else. I think you just got to hang with it a little bit longer. And that's what I'm going to attempt to do here. All right, so there we go. That was the unboxing, the specs the review, the installation of the Akara G4 video doorbell. Let's move on to a health update. As far as my health goes, I wanna thank you so much for your support. Again, I'm in the middle of this fight. Your support means so much, keeps me positive. I really haven't had a negative thought in this whole process, which is crazy. And it's because of the love and support from all of you around the world. Langabeer Fight Club, that's what we're calling you. And I thank you so much for that support. Now. Go and check out my playlist. I've got every video we've done on the colon cancer journey, if that's what you're here for. Again, we're gonna keep these health updates at the end. We're gonna do it with chapters. So if you have subscribed for this reason, just keep in mind my health updates will be at the end of each video. But as far as an update for today, I am going through full Fox chemo. I just finished cycle eight on Thursday. Filming here today is Sunday. I had my uh, infusion for three hours on Thursday. Then I get the chemo pump. I had that removed on Saturday. Uh, which is the case on every cycle. So Thursday to Saturday of the pump. Then I go through a little bit of recovering, just taking it easy a couple days. And then usually by Tuesday, they say it's out of my system and I'm back to normal for 10 days until the next cycle. Now, as far as the cycles go, I'm going up to 11. We were originally supposed to go up to 12, but because of some bumps in the road with the colon perforation and colon blockage, I had to take a cycle out of the equation. And then I had to recover from that surgery for four to six weeks. But now we're back at it. And again, I just finished eight. So I got nine, 10, and 11 to go. After 11, which would be the second week in June, we're gonna do a PET scan. And PET scans light up cancer like a Christmas tree. And that's how you can really tell how you're doing in your fight. Now, up until that PET scan, I'm looking pretty good. Now, no evidence of disease was you're shooting for. It's called NED, and that's technically remission. Now, 
my oncologist isn't going to officially call me Ned just because of the factors involved and what I've been through. But everything's looked pretty damn good here recently. I had a PET scan a while ago that showed no evidence of the disease. And just so you know, I have the colon cancer that spread to my liver. I'm told that if something's going to end me someday, it's going to be my liver, not my colon. So my liver is what we got to keep healthy. That PET scan showed nothing in my liver, which was fantastic. And then as part of my surgery of my bowel perforation, which was a horrible circumstance, but in that process, they took 35 lymph nodes out to check them for cancer. And there was no evidence of disease in those lymph nodes. And then after my recovery from my surgery, we wanted to just see how I was doing. And we did a CT scan, no evidence of disease in that CT scan. So unofficially, I'm about as no evidence of disease as you can get, which is awesome. So that's great news. But again, we want to just finish these cycles and get to where the original plan was to get me through this first you know, round or whatever you want to call it of chemo, which is going to be 12, now it's 11, and do that PET scan. Then from there, we figure out what we're going to do next. But if I'm free of disease with that PET scan, then that's just great news. And that's what we're shooting for, and that's what I'm hoping for. You get that scan anxiety. And for you cancer survivors out there, you know what it's like to think about those scans. You just never know what you're going to get. Which guys got my back. You got to give me all those well wishes that that PET scan the second week of June is good to go. Then Teresa and I actually have a vacation scheduled to go to the Bahamas, which very excited about. And so hopefully get a little break from chemo at least uh, for that. But right now we're just kind of in limbo. Um, other than, you know, my labs when I went into chemo looked really good. So that's great. Now I do have a tumor marker. It's all called, also called the CAA marker. Now, I've talked about this before when it comes to colon cancer. Um, basically, you go from zero to 2.5 for a normal healthy person. A smoker, a healthy smoker with no cancer can be up to a five. That tumor marker gets above a 10. That means your cancer is starting to spread. Tumor marker gets above a 20. That means you're, you're starting to get in trouble. Now, when I started this, I was a 7.9. And slowly before my uh, blockage and perforation, that kept going down with every chemo. And we got it down to a 0.8 right after my surgery, which is when my tumor was removed and all of that happened. Now, slowly but surely, each chemo, it's just gone up a point. And now we're back up to a 1.4. But again, a normal healthy person is a 0 to 2.5. And this tumor marker is not everything. It, you know, everything that I'm told from my oncologist and everybody involved, you know, I'm in a good spot. You know, I'm still within a healthy range. So considering I'm stage four, We'll take that 1.4 as a good number. Me personally, I'd like to see it go back down because it was going back down up until the last few cycles of chemo, but that doesn't mean anything from what I'm told. So it's not a negative. It's still great that it's under a 2.5 because again, I'm still in that healthy range with all the rest of you wonderful, healthy persons. So anyway, maybe next time it'll go down, but until then, no big concern. That's really the only update I've got. So again, we've got rounds or cycles 9, 10, and 11 to go get that PET scan, and then that will be a big update at that point. But I'll keep updating you through those different cycles and, and letting you know how it's going to go. And again, we'll do that at the end of the video. We'll keep the rest of our content normal at the beginning of the videos, and we'll keep cranking them out because I feel good. That's the key here. I feel good. And as of right now, pretty much no evidence of disease in my body, and I'm going to be thankful for that of every day that is the case. But most of all, I just want to thank you again for your support and sticking with me. Again, it has not been a usual journey here on our YouTube channel, and you're, you're, I say it each time, but you are the most loyal, wonderful subscribers a guy could ask for, and thank you for being so patient. So we're going to be back next week, and we're going to keep cranking them out, because I'm back. I'm back, damn it. I'm back. All right? So thank you for watching. Hit that like button if you like this video. Subscribe to the channel. If you're new here, welcome to the party. It's going to be a party, damn it. It's going to be a party for a long time. Don't let this cancer talk scare you because I will kick its ass. That's all there is to it. Anyway, until next week, peace and love.